Continuing here with the dress, I love how the shoulders of the dress that she's wearing. So we have a hint to a typical Filipiniana, of course, but then they added a little bit of creativity and gave us this new texture with the fabric that seems to be honestly a flower. Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portales and for today's video we have a very special one because for today's video we're going to be talking about the Grand Santa Cruz and of Bini Bini Pilipinas 2022. For those of you who have been following me since last year when I covered Bini Bini Pilipinas in 2021, you'd know that this is my very first time experiencing this particular segment of the pageant because last year I started reviewing the activities already very close to a preliminary competition. So witnessing all of the photos and videos this year has definitely been a discovering journey and of course as you can imagine, I did my own little research to better understand what the activity is all about. So from what I gathered, the Grand Santa Cruz is all about showcasing some of the religious heritage in the country as well as some of the historical heritage, while at the same time showcasing some of the creativity, of course, of the designers and the people that help the candidates to come up with such elaborate and beautiful costumes. Santa Cruz is supposed to commemorate the discovery of the Holy Cross. So I guess that in Latin America, this will be the equivalent of uh, Flores de Mayo that we call. So for this video, I prepared a list of 12 candidates that really, really stood out in my opinion. Some of the criteria that I took into consideration to come up with this list were the religious references and the artistry of the costumes as well. So without further ado, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, let me know in the comment section if you agree with my comment, my feedback, and my top 12. Without further ado, I will see you right after the intro. All right, so to get things started, the first one on the list, we have Bini Bini 39. Uh, her name is Jasmine Omai. And of course, I think that this was such a beautiful dress because already from an overall perspective, it looks so, so fashionable. This is something that I would expect to see at an event such as the Met Gala. Uh, and although it might not be the obvious reference when it comes to religion, I think that it's really very subtle here uh, in the way that they incorporated the details. For example, we have the religious reference here with the headpiece, of course, that she's wearing. And of course, you can also see some of the references to the flowers within the dress and the pattern that was selected for it. So this one in particular had a very clever and subtle way to incorporate all of the references while also allowing the gown or the costume to shine by itself. Next one on the list, we have Bini Bini 6, Elda Luis Aznar. And this was not a very obvious pick for me. However, after I took a closer look, I really had to give her a spot within my list. And the reason for that is because I don't think that white is a very exciting color, or some people say that it's not even a color. But really, when you take a closer look at this dress, you can really see that there is so much attention to detail in the way that this entire gown was put together. Of course, we have a very obvious reference here to religion with the cross on her neck and similar to the previous example you can also see a lot of the references to the flower incorporated within the gown as well and the more that i was looking into it then i also thought that you know white is a very pure color which of course goes very hand in hand with the topic of religion so i think that after analyzing this dress for a few minutes it quickly became one of my favorites next on the list we have been even in one stacy daniela gabrielle Honestly, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I love what she's wearing, but I'm so so distracted by her beauty. This woman is just I don't even know what to tell you. Focusing and going back to what she's wearing. I think that this is a very creative dress. If you compare it to some of the previous examples that we were looking at, I don't think that there is as much attention to detail in the dress itself. It's just a plain fabric. But the real attention to detail here is within the accessories that uh, Stacy is wearing. Of course, my eyes go immediately to the little angel that she has on her chest and also at the bottom of the dress. I think that this is very creative. It's very fun and it's very interesting for the eye because it doesn't matter where you look and there's always something for you to discover. Uh, same thing with the heart that she is holding in her hands. This is a very obvious religious reference, of course, at least for those of you who are Catholic out there. And once again, we're going back to the religious references with the headpiece that she has around her head. In my opinion, as I said, not the most detailed dress, but definitely one of the campiest ones in terms of creativity. Next on the list, we have Bini Bini 5, Karen Laurie Mendoza. Here she's giving us the best of both worlds. You know, for some of the previous candidates, I was uh, complimenting the details. For some of them, I was complimenting how camp the dresses were. However, for this one, Karen went the extra mile and gave us the best of both elements. Let's start 
scarf from head to toe of course with this beautiful beautiful crown i really love that it's so eccentric you know it doesn't really fit her head but it's just like standing on top of her head and i also love that it has rocks which also match the color of the dress. You can really tell that here everything was intentional, there was no mistake, this is well thought out from beginning to end and it really shows. I also wanna take a moment to compliment Karen on her beauty. This is something that I mentioned during my first review video for Bini Mini Filipinas and that is that Karen seems to be having such a great time all throughout the pageant. It's very refreshing to see uh, and I'm really, really happy for her because as we said, she's one of the candidates who has a lot of potential and of course I want her to perform very well but then I also want her to enjoy the entire process. Continuing here with the dress, I love how the shoulders of the dress that she's wearing. So we have a hint to a typical Filipiniana, of course, but then they added a little bit of creativity and gave us this new texture with the fabric that seems to be honestly a flower. So for me, that is one of the references. We also see the same elements around her waist. And when you get mostly to the core of the dress where you have um, uh, the waist and the chest area, you can also see how much attention to detail there was with all of the pearls, with all of the rocks and all of the stones that were added. I mean, so from head to toe, it's a fun dress. It's interesting, it's colorful, it pays tribute to the religion and also you can see the creativity. So nothing to complain. I'm so, so happy about this one. Moving on, we have Bini Bini 34. Her name is Christine Julian Opiasa. And there are so many different things that I would like to compliment about this particular dress. But of course, I think that the element that really grabbed my attention at first was the headpiece, what she's wearing. And also the fact that she has completely covered her hair and that she's not just wearing a headpiece with the halo around her head, but actually something that comes and covers the entire head. There are so many stones in this headpiece that I feel like they were working on it for hours and days and weeks. I don't know, but this must have taken so much time. And I also like the fact that it's not extremely colorful, you know? Earlier, I was talking about one of the candidates with a white dress. Well, here we have some white elements, we have some silver elements, and the stones that they selected precisely add a few shades of other colors, such as pink, such as purple. But overall, they kept it very simple. Instead, they really focused more on the details of the dress, on making it a dynamic dress, because we see some fringe elements over here, which of course is always going to add a little bit of movement, a little bit of excitement. It's gonna catch your eye and your attention. Even while paying homage to the religion and you know going outside of the box with the creativity and all of that, I still like the fact that they incorporate some traditional elements. We have the Filipiniana here, of course, adapted to the dress, adapted to what she's wearing, but still keeping that essence. Even the pearls that she's wearing as her earrings uh, are a little reference here to uh, Zambales. Moving on, we have Bini Bini 17, Chelsea Fernandez, another one of the candidates that I love. Just her beauty, oh my God, she is so stunning. But you know what? Actually, for this particular dress, I feel like she definitely was not relying on her beauty because, I mean, the dress, the costume, whatever you want to call it, is just so, so big, uh, so outside of the box, so grand, that it kind of overshadows her, it kind of swallows her a little bit. But, you know, normally within a pageant, that's not something very good. But I think that for this particular activity, it's okay, it's appropriate, because you want to make sure that all of the references are really out there. You wanna make sure that you're allowing the designers and the creative team to really showcase everything that they wanna put out. And I think that overall, this is a very effective dress for that. Already just look at it as a whole, the dress itself looks like a flower. From this piece that she has on her shoulders and around her neck, to the headpiece that she's also wearing, and even uh, the bottom of the dress, you can see so many different uh, flowers and even interpretations and shapes that might refer to a flower. I think that this was mainly the priority and the focus of the team when it comes to this dress because I cannot see as many religious references as perhaps other candidates um, but still I guess that it will be in this case the, the headpiece referring a little bit to this you know holy figure to the whole halo thing around the head and almost giving this effect of light of something holy of something sacred well actually never mind i just see that she is actually holding one of these things how do you call this i have no idea you know like when you go to church and they just move these things and there's a little bit of like smoke that comes out of it and it smells real good i don't know how to call it guys it's been a while i need to go back to church you know what i'm sorry jesus but if you guys know how this is called, please let me know in the comment section. But overall, beautiful dress. 
I love how big it is, how grand. I enjoy it. All right, next on the list, we have Bini Bini 21, Gracia Elisabetta Mendoza. This dress in particular, honestly, I know that I said this earlier for one of the other dresses, but this belongs at the Met Gala. I don't know if some of you guys followed the Met Gala this year, but I think it was so underwhelming. And if I was able to see something like this, I feel like it will be so exciting, so interesting. Um, that's how much talent there is in the Philippines in terms of creativity, in terms of design and designers as well. This is an outstanding piece. I think that one of the most interesting here is really the, the color story that they're giving us with the dress going from uh, very dark shades of red to very uh, light getting very very close to the color of the blood and i think that that's definitely one of the elements that they might want to showcase in terms of religion of course she's also wearing this piece which represents the heart we know that for catholics this is very representative of jesus as well and even some of the elements that she has um, on her shoulders so of course we have the traditional filipiniana but i love what they put like this golden elements around her this golden elements on her shoulders and that kind of become uh the necklace that she's wearing exquisite there is no other word to describe it other than exquisite or should i say maybe it's a little bit more appropriate immaculate <laughs> some things that are not even necessary for me to comment such as the attention to detail is very obvious in this dress but of course the design as well i feel like even if we took away the religious references and some of the you know attention to detail this will still be a very beautiful beautiful gown next we have bini bini 10 fatima kate bisan and i just had to put her on the list because already she looks different from everyone else in this particular activity i feel like the way that she went with this turban that is wrapping her head very beautiful, very creative. And also that the dress itself, what she's wearing is very simple, but the main focus of the entire thing is really the cape that she's wearing with this yellow, very close to golden color, which really, really contrasts very well with the red of the inside of the cape and also the blue of the gown that she's wearing with the gloves, of course. So chic, so fashionable. I also think that this is a very effective costume because it makes me think a lot of the Filipino flag, of course. Uh, you have all of the colors and of course, with her very light skin, makes me think of the white of the dress as well. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, in terms of creativity, in terms of thinking outside of the box and not going with the obvious choice, this was one of the most creative ones. Next, we have Bini Bini 35, Diana Maki. Uh, if a flower was a person, that will be Diana. Everything from the shape of the dress to even the shoulders that she has, it just makes me think of a beautiful, delicate rose. I love that this is a very uh, baby pink color, very innocent. And also at the same time, she is holding a white bird, which is normally used to represent peace. Similar to one of the previous examples, I think that this was definitely the focus for this particular dress and its concept because I don't see as many religious references. However, the headpiece that she has, very small, very tiny, very subtle, makes me think a little bit of a crown of thorns. So I don't know if that was the intention and perhaps that's where the religious message relies. But in terms of uh, design, in terms of detail, in terms of creativity, I think that they really, Diana and her team really understood the assignment because she looks like a million dollars, or should I say like a million flowers. Next on the list, we have Bini Bini 8, Nicole Boudol. I know that some of you, or actually a lot of you, are very excited for Nicole. And I'm being honest, I'm very excited for her as well. In terms of the costume that she was wearing, I think that this is very outside of the box compared to most people because we saw a lot of people, you know, going very grand with the dress, going very grand with the headpiece. But here, Nicole really went very grand with both of those aspects. The dress is not as big as perhaps some of the other candidates, but in terms of detail, in terms of storytelling with the colors this one is very very interesting and also I love that the headpiece is not only so big like in terms of height but also that it goes all the way down to the bottom of the dress on top of that I think that the winning element that Nicole has is really just her attitude how she handles herself Looking at this photo, you would see it's a beautiful costume, but I was watching some of the videos of her that people were posting online and she just has fun with it. Like she doesn't take herself overly seriously and that's good. That's very refreshing. 
Of course, there will come certain moments within the competition, certain activities that will require for her to, to be a little bit more serious, more focused and be more on the beauty queen shoes perhaps. But for activities like this, when she is interacting with people in person, when she's just, you know, showcasing uh, the creativity of her team, I think that this was the perfect moment to add a little bit of her personal spice. So in all aspects, this was a win-win for me from the design to the creativity to the religious references to Nicole herself. Moving on, we have Binibini 19. Her name is Ira Patricia Malaluan. And I think that her dress is actually one of my favorites in terms of the color. I'm a sucker for yellow. I love it so much. And I love that her and her team incorporated different shades of yellow all throughout this dress. It looks very royal in my opinion. And of course, this is something that I'm very used to see in, in figurines of the Virgin with holding Jesus. I don't know in the Philippines, but in Cuba, I don't know in the Philippines, but in Cuba, one of the images that we adore of the Virgin is always wearing yellow. So this reminds me of that precisely. The dress is giving me a lot, of course, all the creativity and all of the attention to detail that I would expect from this, it's right there the traditional references filipiniana you have the religion you have pearls around her neck and of course she looks like she's having a blast similar to other contestants what i said that if you remove some of the references that make this to be a costume this could also be a very beautiful beautiful dress can't complain it's a win-win <laughs> All right, and last but not least on the list, we have Bini Bini 40, Roberta Tamondong. I know that I talked about her a little bit during my introduction video, and I think that once again, Roberta managed to do very well in the competition. I mean, at least for this activity. This dress looks so amazing, and it makes me feel like it's something that I will definitely found on a fashion runway. It feels very editorial. This feels something that I would open a magazine and I could see an entire photo shoot for this, just in terms of how creative it is. I don't know so much for the religious references because I think that the dress is a little bit see-through, especially towards the middle. So I don't know how Catholic that is, <laughs> but of course I can see the, all of the references to the flowers and how they played with different textures, with different intensity of colors. And they really thought outside of the box in terms of what they wanted to bring to the table in terms of design, in terms of presentation. And of course, Roberta's beauty also elevates the entire thing. Send her and the other ladies that I mentioned to the Met Gala and I promise you, it's gonna be one of the most exciting Met Galas of all time. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. Those were my top 12 picks for the Grand Santa Cruz and activity of Bini Bini Pilipinas 2022. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with my picks and also if you agree with my comments. If there's someone else that you would like to add on the list, just let me know and we can have a conversation around those things. As usual, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, come here and give me a hug. That's a little observation on the channel. Now that I love you, that I appreciate you. Thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of your day here with me. <laughs> and until I see you next time, please stay safe. Be kind to one another. Sending you all my love, all my kisses. And I'll see you on the next one.